Good morning and welcome to a frosty morning. It's the full 80 minutes. No, I'm not Michael Gleddle. Uh, Mickey's uh, hopefully, you know, fingers crossed. I think he's, uh, he's either been clubbing till late in the night. We don't know. But if you've seen Mick again, give a shout to the show. If you've seen Mick, I get him out last night in the clubs of uh, Leeds and Clubland in Bradford. We've got on my left, I only can describe as one of my uh, favourite people in the game, Arbish Cake. Um, His nickname's BBB, best, B-B-B. Be- best bet bish. <laughs> best bet bish. Can I try and finish a sentence before our joke? Oh, sorry, I'll, I'll leave the jokes to you, Dad, as no, well. No, no, you can, you can get in, but just do it on my cue. Um, <laughs> bish is, uh, we're going to do a little bit with Bish on his own later on in the show, but he's uh, been a fantastic person for show me since we met him. He's, he's, he's been with us right from the start. Um, many memories, Bish. We've got the, you know, from the academy days to the Leeds days to the Salford days with Marwan and Kukash. And then we went to Wakefield mm-hmm. with the cold showers. <laughs> <laughs> and then we participated into part time uh, with York. Were at York first? Yeah, York first, yeah. And now Sheffield. Sheffield yeah, yeah. We're dying to ask you a few about the World Cup, Bish. We've left that behind, but the lads are going to, you know, we're all going to ask you some questions. Uh, we did a little thing on the World Cup here for you, saying how, how well we thought you played the try. We were all a bit emotional when you scored the try. You know, we described it as a sixty-yard try. We're about four. <laughs> but hopefully, no one sees it on YouTube. But we did describe it as one of the most exciting talents. Uh, you know, so we'll get into that. But thank you for coming, Bish. Mystic Jimmy. I don't know why we're calling that. I don't think <laughs> no he's done anything knows. for about four years. Uh, <laughs> Stones Glass Houses springs to mind. I know I knew it about Jimbo, it's that Lancashire thing. And then we've got, are we describing our Joe this week? Show me the money. But yeah, Joe does a show, I'll get a plug with with Bish called The Punt. Um, And I think we're going to change his name because it's something to do with losing bets. (laughs) (laughs) Joe the Loss. You can't do better than that. That's the worst name well, I've ever heard. Joe if you comment, it, please put some in. I've just done it off the cuff. Joe Moss. <laughs> the beat. Um, right, straight in, guys. We've done about... Um, the season started, Bishop. You played your first game of the season yesterday. Yep. Sheffield v Hull. Everyone's excited to know, A, how were you shaping up at Sheffield? And then, B, Super League Hull. What did it all look like? Yeah, it was a good game. Like you said, our, our first um, first one of the year. You know, our season starts in a couple of weeks, so um, it was nice to. You know, we signed a lot of players. Nice to um, get out on the field together and test ourselves against obviously a Super League team. You know, Hull came and um, had a had a strong strong team to start the game, and you know we we started well, and um, you know I thought our, our middles really fronted up against against their middle middles. That were a good battle, and. Um, you know, we, we went in uh, ahead at half time. We had good performance. You know, our, our hours were really good. Um, Corey Aston and, uh, and Jack Hansen as well. So, yeah, thought, thought it went well. And then, um, sort of second half, obviously the, the changes happened, and and um, I think Brad Dwyer came on and sort of changed the game really um, for them. And but I think it's a it's a good one for us. It's a, it's a good one, like I said, to test where we're at, and uh, I think we'll take a lot from that and um, move forward into. Into this week where we we uh, we got Doncaster at, at home as well, so looking forward to, to this week. South Yorkshire Derby, bish. Have you yeah. played in the South Yorkshire Derby before? I haven't, no. So, no, yeah. we did when I was the uh, chairman of Doncaster. So it's quite. It's not. It's you know. It's not on the things of Saints Wigan or Leeds Bradford in the day cast. There's about three hundred turn up. No, no, it's it's, it's <laughs> there's a little bit there. It's actually quite good. A lot of players historically used to like swap from one club and then you say where you going? They say oh Sheffield. It was like twelve mile down road. So I'm sure he played at the keep out. No, no, we're we're at, we're at the OLP. We're at home, so yeah. But obviously, Sheffield, you know, we've um, when they weren't in the city, they played a lot of games at, at the Keep Moat. So, yeah, so no, it's um, obviously the two clubs, like you said, there's, there's a rivalry, but they're close. So yeah, it'll be good. To, uh, our last uh, last friendly before the season starts. So hopefully, um, you know, we'll uh, work on those combinations and uh, you know, hopefully start the, start the year well. If um, give people an idea, Bish. I haven't been to Sheffield, what the new stadium, what, what it's like, because what's it called? The uh, Olympic Legacy Park. So it's, it's on the old the old Don Valley. Um, but yeah, no, it's a, it's a 3G pitch. Um, you know, great great stadium, really. We've got one big stand. You know, I think the, there's plans to develop the rest of the ground, but, you know, 
it's a new 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 stadium inside. You know, it's kitted out. Good changing rooms. Good uh, warm up area. So um, yeah, we've we've got everything we need there. Um, as I said, I, I think the club's slowly building now. Now they've they're back in Sheffield and and um, can sort of build routes and and progress and try and tick tick those licensing box or you know however, however the game's going forward. Jimmy, the Mystic Meg, has been a big advocate of Sheffield because that's where all these players are. But uh, <laughs> without that, it's. I think the story of Sheffield, a bit like Doncaster, would be unbelievable if one of them South Yorkshire clubs locally based. A lot of people said they should have entwined, then it should have been called South Yorkshire. That's what worked historically. When one club did better than the other, the one that would have been better said, oh, we're not doing that. You know what I mean? So it's always been like that, in my opinion. Um, to carry two clubs to get the crowds in South Yorkshire, it's going to make some major marketing to be able to suffice at Super League level and do that because historically South Yorkshire's not an hot bed for rugby league. They'd have to go into the amateur game, which I'm sure Sheffield and Doncaster are doing. But let's be honest, what's your average crowd? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure to be honest. Off the top that of means you'll know, but you're just not going to say. <laughs> I know, I know. But you have to remember, yeah. <laughs> it, it did only move. Back to the stadium halfway through last year. So I'm not asking for an excuse, I'm just no, asking for no, no, But thinking. I'm telling you, they sold it out. So What's the sell out? Yeah. The 750 is the capacity of that stand. So their aim is to try and just pack that out. You can still stand around. So that side. can't go Super League with that thing, they'd have to open up. No, but you've still got a lot of standing. Yeah. Stand you can stand on the slope, there's little hills all the way, a little mini amphitheatre. Mm. But the idea is that each... As the years go by, another stand will be built, another stand will be built. You'd need, what, three, four thousand 4,000 to have a chance of getting yeah. into Super League, Bish? Yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah, you, you need more, but, you know, I think, like you said, it's our, this is our first full season in the stadium. So it's a, it's, it's a build, you know, it's, it's a building process, and I think, similar, what we do on the pitch will obviously affect how many people we're getting in the stands, so, you know, if we can be successful on the pitch, hopefully that comes with... Um, People turning up to games, travelling fans turning up to games, and the club do a lot as well for the kids. And a bit, I think that's lost over here. And something the Americans are really good at is it's an event. It's not just a game. It's not just the uh, eighty minutes on the field. It's attracting people before the game and and hanging, Toronto, hanging around Toronto, after the game. Yeah, yeah. The match needs to. That's it. The match day experience. So I think that's that's really good um, at Sheffield and. And hopefully, yeah, as, as I said, if you know, as the season goes on and we're, we're where we want to be, then hopefully the, the crowds will improve. And you've got what I'd consider one of the the, 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 the funniest, you know, Mark's a character of the highest regard. I used to have a lot of dealings with Mark in the day. He says, I blow him out now. I, I certainly don't. It's just that Jimmy acts a bit weird if you talk to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> but Mark... I mean, when I first come across Mark, he, he, we was the biggest at Doncaster. They was in the league above, but we was the one who everyone were talking about. Our crowds were averaging up to that. We were rocking it. Mark came to play a, I don't know if it were a friendly or a game against us. I met him for the first time, and it struck me as somebody who what, just knew, proper knew the game round there, but a lovely smile about him. You know, I, I liked his character straight away, and then his voice. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And he got into it a little bit. He, he, if you talk rugby with Mark and they say, I can do it, I'd say Mark's up there with the best ever. People don't understand. I don't know if the humans do play for him. Does he remind you that he was once a great player? You know, a Challenge Cup winner against Wigan? Has he never dropped yeah, that he, in? He tells you that. I say, when we when I, when I met him, um, obviously before before I signed, and, you know, we thought, oh yeah, I'll, I'll only be half an hour, an hour <laughs> at most. And three hours later, I'm getting a call up and he's saying, where are you? <laughs> so yeah, no, he loves a chat and, you get that, um, you get that speech and that passion, and I think you know we signed a couple of players this year who we share in the carpool, and it's it's the same story. So yeah, you know, yeah it's, uh, well, I can remember watching that game, and and you know I don't know what odds that would have been in the day, maybe thirty three to one, whatever the one we're going to have to beat for. So many years they've won everything, they had the dream team, and then the Sheffield lads just went and give it to them, and Mark actually a couple of eye bombs, he he, he terrorised them with his with his. And you can see him, he once told me a story, which I'd, I'd love to get him on show to tell, but he said, you've got a demand him. I go, nah, back, you've got a demand it. You know, he is, and he's, if you're in control, he said, no one ever got near me. I told everybody in our team, he said, they, and he mentioned his mate who played for Great Britain. Do you know why he played for Great Britain? Because I told him what to do for 10 years, <laughs> and that's why. So I'm listening to him, we're fantastic. And then he said, I once, uh, he said, I once demanded the ball off the hooker. He goes, and if they don't give me, he said, do you know what you should do? And he was serious, he said, I kicked him. So I booted him up <laughs> ass. 
He said, with the biggest kick, I think it was Lee, Lee Jackson. Lee Jackson. And he said, I just booted him and said, hey, yeah, you ever not give me that ball? I think we were talking about some of the modern day because of old parts, you know, and he, he was probably that architect of halfback. I actually know this. An old school coach has to change his methods. So Mark used to say to me, you can fix players up on the shoulders, fix, fix. I think I'd love to hear his views about, same as Paulie a bit, and the best mates, the big friends, how we often adapt to being a 20 years coach in this game. Because if you don't adapt into this modern system and still think you're playing that, you're in big trouble. As, do you think Mark's adapted into how fast the rook is? I know it's still not as fast as Super League Championship, but it's definitely fast, fast. The six again rule, the six again. Yeah. I, yeah, I think I think so. I think was as I said, we're developing. So this year we've got, we're, you know, we're tracking GPS, we're tracking, we've got a speed coach, got a nutrition coach. So everything's becoming more like like the modern day game. And we're, obviously, we're trying to mark ourselves on Super League. So in pre season, we sort of take the the game speeds and work rates of what the Super League teams are doing, and that's what we're trying to train, um, get out of training. Um, so you know, we're always trying to trying to touch that Super League benchmark um, and it, look at our squad we've, we've got a lot of Super League experience in that squad so um, but it, I think Mark is just probably the best thing that I find about him is just honest mm -hmm. you know, he'll tell you he'll tell you how it is you might not like to hear it but he'll, know it. he'll tell you how it is and as a player for me that's perfect so um, yeah I think he's, he's a great player's player and but yeah can uh he talks a lot, so the sessions drag on a little bit, but uh, you know we, we get through the work. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, you know what? And I say this in the honest, in, 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 in any way I can. He's a bit the best story ever. Sheffield do it because Mark's probably had three or four times where we're going to lose the club, either financially or going to lose his job, and he's kept the job and he's kept the club going. He single-handedly, from Gary Everington leaving, has probably been the biggest influence on Sheffield rugby. I'm not asking for a knighthood, certainly, because you would have to do some thing. But really, for rugby league, there should be something for Mark. Because I tell you now, we have a Mark Aston in our game. I've said it, I've said it when they finished top that year and everyone were on about them. And then this two year later, boom. And he's kept him going. And he's had to go from a, probably a 300 grand cap to a 40 grand cap. And guess what? He's kept him going. And then he's found some players. And he, he, he used to have a laugh with me and he'd, he used to use the guy from London when I used to say how many players I've. I did, and they've gone to Super League. Mark always counted it with uh, Mick Stringer. Mick Stringer, so he sent him to London, I think, and he got him to... But Mark's probably done hundreds of them, you know, where he's had a massive influence on a player playing at an higher level. I think he was quite good with his own son. If you look at Corey, I don't know what you lads think. Must be very hard to coach your own son coming up and knowing you've got a good player, but... I thought Corey then went to Super League, but I think Mark was... I, won't, I think Mark managed that very well for me because he let him go and have his chance, you know what I mean? He let, and then he's ended up at another club. He's come back to Sheffield, I think. Is he come back to Sheffield this yeah, year? Yeah, he is, yeah. But I think all Mark's story is just unbelievable. Like I said, I think Corey probably brought up, you see pictures of Corey with Mark all the way through Sheffield's journey, do you know what I mean? So yeah, you think yeah. it's a full family job, isn't it? It's a full... When he actually got his chance, Corey, for Cass on Super League, he had probably the best games I've ever seen for Powley. He set about to open. He, I think Mark... I wonder if you ask Mark honestly, what privately, what's his best memories? Is we cri we kid about it. I reckon it'd be Corey doing that on Sky. I would love to have spoke to him that night because I know we, I could see Corey got man at match. Paulie would happy, you know. Mark would have been super proud of that, I'm sure. But I think he is the best journey ever. If he pulls this off, it's a 25 year journey. I, I don't know anybody else apart from Gary. I know Mark has that. It's weird actually. Mark has a real lovely relationship with Gary. You know. He tells stories about Gary used to be chairman at Sheffield and two grand, you know what I mean? He goes, he's never changed, he's always done it, you know. <laughs> he did that to us 25 years ago. Uh, he famously got sold, Mark, do you know? Yeah, yeah, they tell the story, yeah. Featherston, yeah, it's unbelievable, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. About 90 grand or something in them days, which is incredible now, because 90 grand nowadays would be a lot. Yeah, That's record, 30 years ago. Up, that, really? And Featherston fans within the first three games were like, whoa, no, no, no. <laughs> but I think Gary bought him back for about yeah, five grand, didn't yeah. he? Which is too big a Gary, but yeah, I do. I think I hope that I hope that plays out, and I hope genuinely, genuinely for our game, I hope Mark proves it because, as I say, the rugby league and the people in the game should give him. If you don't want to buy giving Gary some it, well, why why not Mark Aston? Secondly, Bish Joe, you went to your uh, you went to the Lee Leeds game. Give us your thoughts. 
Lee first. <clears throat> um, Lee looked Lee looked very solid actually. I think I was surprised they played a lot of like flash rugby last year, didn't they? With how obviously they had a lot of full time players, so it, the standard was a, a bit different. They had a really good team, but they actually proved they proved they probably could be there. That they're not just going to pull off some tries. That they're hard working. They did a lot. I think what they're going to struggle with is actually what they were probably so good at last year. Some of the plays. They just looked at maybe they'll get that over time. But they just looked a bit. One pass bit, short. Yeah, one pass short, one play short. They just couldn't get that big try. Obviously, up until the end, where a bit of Zach individual magic. Uh, so yeah, I thought Lee 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 looked good. They looked solid. Um, they've signed that new prop again. I think it got announced last night or yesterday at some point. So yeah, I think that'd be a good addition because they're probably a prop short as well. Obviously, they've got him now. Hopefully, he adds up to what they want him to be. And yeah, uh, yeah, solid, just solid. I think yeah, that, that's probably the word I'd describe him. Jimmy, Lee for Lee, what uh, you Lee, yeah, I thought. I mean, we are we talked about Ed Redding Pape a lot, haven't we? He's currently leading the race for Man of Steel. He's short price in the odds. Wow. You know, that, that shows wow. what everybody has seen of him and expects. So the way they played without him, considering they rely on him so much in attack and, and, pl- and the halves playing on the back of him, I thought they looked good. I thought it was a, a very good friendly. Um, you know, if we're just sticking on Lee for now, yeah. Lachlan Lamb looked lively. Zach... He commented straight away, didn't he? he? looked as fit and as lean as he had done. He had a great finish to the season last year. He's clearly picked up where he left off. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it was probably more positives for Leeds than there was for Lee in that game. You know, a young side. Uh, they, had, they had a number of what we'd expect to be the starting team, but it was a, a significantly weaker team than Leeds will be aiming to put out. So... To run Lee so close, I think Bell probably be the happier of the two coaches, in my opinion. Um, I think Lee's challenge is, is to survive comfortably. That's how I'm viewing it. I, I do, I find it hard to see that they won't be, you know, in the bottom four, to be quite frank. I think, you know, so uh, Pape's huge. Thanks, I've, if seen you do, I've seen you do this before, uh, Jimmy, you get it right. about the Lancashire. <laughs> I know you definitely don't know that a lot. <laughs> you, 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 you get this about this. I don't know if it's a bit of Lancashire. We have it with it's my own town, isn't it? So I've, yeah, yeah, you know, I've nothing thinking, against Lee. I'll, I'll I know, I know you have I know you haven't, but I know privately you, you have said some things. But you, <laughs> um, you, you said that I, I'm totally opposite. I think 100 percent what I saw yesterday with one or two players, they're in top six. Yeah. I've actually flipped on my head and watched it yesterday, and I think Derek, I think Degs is thinking that. I think. Somebody's mentioned me, I don't know if you know. First game, they've got named the Bambi. You're Salford, uh, I remember, I think he spent a significant amount. It's going to be probably the greatest pre match, match day experience Super League's ever seen. Oh, He's got it. scouting for girls turning oh, yeah, up. That, yeah. There's going to be big fireworks, you know, at home against Salford. And these are, for me, these are the sort of games on the back of that. They need to win that game, you know. I just think it'll be very hard. I think there's five teams who'll be. Of course, they compete for the top six. Injuries are going to be huge as always. But John John Bastin were, were, were raving about Lammy. He thought he thought young Lammy. When I thought that he never went through the line. Yeah. John said he caused us problems with his running game all game. So he said quick, he, he, were, he were just making angles. And if you look at the try they got, usually the tries they get, it's when he's running over. So they always say Ryan Hampshire could do it, where he just skip quick. Yeah, yeah. And it creates that number on his outside. He did that a lot. So you might not see him go through the line, but he's causing absolute havoc because he's making defenders coming and then he's letting ball go at last minute which is uh, but he, he be interesting because because Lammy you probably see when they drop into this game from the NRL it's usually they haven't been in the NRL which obviously he hasn't because he won't be over here we can, we can say that honestly then he went championship and you go is he only good because he's in championship Potentially what we saw, no? Potentially. And they've got Joe Miller to come back on the right edge. Got Joe Miller, Ben Reynolds. They've got a couple, yeah. Ben Reynolds played yesterday. Yeah. Played on Saturday, yeah. Yeah, they've got, a, they've got a few selection things because obviously the full-back, I think one of the, the full-back from last year... Uh, he left, no, 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 I'm sorry, there's, I think yeah, they the must have signed someone else. They've got, right. they've got Zach and then another person who so can play... they've got Gas O'Brien as well, though. Who can play full-back... 
So I've, I've read an article on it yesterday, and I'm really bad with names, but they've got two, they've got a few decisions there because they might put Zach at centre, even though he's got the one shirt, he could be the starting centre. And judging on the team, they might need him there. They might. Yeah, Pat's going to be brutal then if you're putting another one in there. Some big boys. They, they were coming off. We were next to them <laughs> coming off. They were Massive. monsters. So if you've got another one going in there, that's going to be absolutely. Uh, 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 they'll they'll have a they'll have a dig, and I think Derek, you know. I think it's weird, it's weird with Exit because you look and you think of all the commotion they got by coming up. They were on everyone's lips all the time. Lee yeah. this, Lee that. And then usually they go up to Super League and they're not one of the big boys at the top table. Do you know what I mean? That's how you're perceived. And then Lee find it quite hard to stay up. I think historically it's the third time they've come straight down, whatever. They're definitely not coming down this time. No, I, no. Can, I, I, I think you know, that is a no, no-brainer. So if, you, if you're one of the other leads... Um... Yeah, I thought Leeds were Leeds were decent, weren't they? I think they've got it's definitely the centre position looked strong, didn't they? I thought they played well, young Tyndall played yeah, you know, young Tyndall same age, but sorry, just everyone describes <laughs> him as young Tyndall. <laughs> Tyndall played really well. Um to be honest, sorry Charlie, but I think I thought he had I thought he I thought he got on top of you that game. He, he did the tackle, got help, get you out. I thought uh, yeah, he did well. Tyndall stood up for himself and they, they were at it, they were shouting at each other a bit, giving each other some jabs. But I think for someone like Tyndall, who's normally quite a quiet lad on the pitch to stand up against someone like Charlie, whether he did win or Oh, is that Charlie? I thought you were saying Charlie, Josh Charlie. Josh Charlie, yeah. He went one on one with Charlie and I thought he did pretty I thought he if if not one handled his own in the mouth game in everything in the attitude in that they went at each other so that were good watching we were right on that sideline that that happened in the second half um, Levi played decent didn't he um, who who was also on for Levi I can't my names of who was what the centre the other centre Lewis Roberts Lewis yeah yeah my head's just well, well, well can I have this yeah sorry no I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> no, miss that one out because I'll let you do no, that no kidding go on, go on. Uh, no no I'll, I'll leave that one out um, but yeah overall team played well half back position again if J- Jack could be that player but he, I think he's still got a year or two left in him developing size m- maturity he dominated the ball in the second half and you could see he's just figuring out how to play against men still so if Blake or Caesar get injured, I think there needs to be a middleman there. That's what I'd say. I'd say that'd be my big point. Um, yeah, I He's think. Smile at that answer. Would, from what from what I saw in the game, honestly, I I don't think so. I think mile has got a couple of games, a couple of brilliant games left in him, like we know he can do. But he looks looks that year older, does old Richie, and I don't like to put. The booting, buddy. He's definitely, <laughs> yeah. He's definitely got some. He, he's got a couple of games left in him. I'm sure he'll time it well. He always seems to time it pretty well, doesn't he? But yeah, if if anything, even at full back position, I'll probably have Handley, who played the first half at full back. I'd probably have Ash as my starting full back, which might shock some Leeds fans who listen. Listen, but it, ha, ha, Handley was awesome at full back. Uh, it would surprise me. He was more the modern fullback. If you watch a lot of day on IRL, it's just tough running time and time again. And he nailed that. He might not have the play in him yet, but does the is Rowan describing Bish or yeah. I'm um, describing Ben, but he, he might not have no, that yeah, final. It, is it? <laughs> <laughs> he might not have that modern play. It might not have that old school back of the line play in him, but round, he, the, back play. round the back play. Sorry, but yeah, he, he were awesome, and I think he might be a starting fullback late. Bish on that, just that little debate there. You've got Myler, who obviously game is based on not kick returns. It's not on push. He's got a great read of the game. He's yeah. awesome at reading the play. He can actually see a play before. I played this few. Danny Maguire, Ryan Braley, you'd say, have got that gift of being able to read it. He's up there with them. Yeah, his anticipation is class, isn't it? Your opinion, you've, we always thought you were going to be a full-back. And then they did put that on you. You were labelled as he can't play round back of a play. Yeah. You know, Bish's hands to catch and pass. Can he put that on? You're now watching the emergence of a different type of fullback. I'd say a lot more direct. What Joe's saying. Yeah. Thoughts? Yeah, I think. Are you well, only on any mailer? Which one do I prefer? Uh, in my team, I guess it depends who my wingers are. If I've got yardage wingers who can. Get us out of yardage. You probably don't need. I think fullback wise, if you're looking at the World Cup, you're probably looking at the Samoa fullback, aren't you? Just 
carries, carries, carries non stop. And that's got a machine, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, no, he's um, on that Swally. He, yeah, Swally, yeah. Um, both, set, both similar, aren't they? Yeah, big yardages. I, it's just a fun, isn't it? Um, I quite like the, the half back though, as a as a full back. I think the really? top at the top of the game, I think that's the difference. I think it's the three V twos on the edge, I think. Um which probably in my forte obviously or, or something that something I need to work on or, and still working on, but I think if you've got wingers who can get you out of yardage, that's probably Can I challenge you, Mish? Yeah you can if yeah. you mind. No, no. If you ju- if are we judging that on Super League, I get you in Super League, and I'll agree with you that at the moment the half back to Elaine are fantastic last year. That that does seem to make the difference. Jake Jake Connor doing what he does when he's on form. But if you look at the NRL and that is our premier comp, yeah, I don't think that's the way they do it much anymore, Vish. I don't know if that there's not many half back in the, in them top few teams. I can't name you one one team that has a half back. That plays fullback essentially. I don't, I don't think there's many that do it anymore. I don't know if, obviously, if I'm judging too heavily on NRL. You're on dodgy ground here, taking the great quake on here because he's already well, thinking. But I think he thinks you've got him there. I, yeah, know, quite, quite potentially. Well, it's the modern game, isn't it? Now it's, everything's a lot quicker. Every, everything's faster. It's more yards getting on the front foot and, and things like that in it and changing changing momentum so yeah I, I can see that I don't, to be fair I don't think there's a right or wrong answer well, I think it, it's, it's your team suit and, that, and how it fits your team really um, obviously me personally if I'm in a team I'm going to be that full back I'm not going to be you have to support put, yourself put, there, put me you? you know put me in space put me in a hole and that's where you're going to get the most out of me so yeah yeah, if, I, if I'm in a team, obviously I'm going that way. I'm going that route. <laughs> yeah. What Bish actually, which is quite good for people to think when Bish said about having the, just explain Bish what you mean by having the wingers. You're, you're about the, what I call the baseball bat wingers, who oh, dare bring it back in. You, you, you're about yardage monsters. Yeah, you? you're, you're, mad, you're yardage guys. Obviously, you're running into brick walls a lot of the time. And sort of as I grew up from my career, I had Ryan Hall on the opposite wing and that sort of, Obviously, he was getting Changing in there, the game, and, yeah, yeah. Um, and bringing it out, and then sort of you had your, your Briscoe were really good at that as well, and and you sort of, you, I think it's a, it's it's your modern game now, isn't it? Your, your wingers, you're not just a finisher anymore. You've you've got to do the tough stuff uh, coming out of yardage and, and get your team on the front foot. I can remember watching you historically at Salford, learning that in a very uh, harsh reality from Leeds, where you went there, and then at Salford you were asked to bring the ball back at you know more or less every set, weren't you? And then Certainly at Wakefield, you became that became your strength, didn't it? Yeah, that's it. You see, I sort of learned, and being a big body, you've got to sort of how you go into contact is important. Obviously, being big, I'm quite easy to get under, so you've got to, you've got to get that lean on. And something sort of we spent time with Corey Hall at York, sort of something that he was sort of learning as well. And you know, obviously, he gets through an awful lot of work. So it's it's just getting your leaning your body into contact, so you're not constantly driven and you know carried and driven back, but. I think as as I sort of grew through my career, and especially at Wakefield, and I was, I think I, I got there when I was twenty six, and then I've got Max Jowett and Tom Johnson, you know, young young kids really. You've, I think you've got that were I had to be that be that role and um, be that guy who, who sort of took responsibility and tried to get us. Get is it a sacrifice, forward. Bish, to do that role? Are you oh, sacrificing a little bit of your... you? Are, you are. I mean, the, I think the the goal is to get a quick play of the ball. You're, you're sort of sacrificing your carry and yardage to get the next man a quick one so he can, you know, and the next man, so you can get the set going. So, yeah, I mean, if you look numbers-wise, I, I probably at Wakefield, I, you know, you're getting that carry five metres in from touchline, five metres off your own line, and like you said, you've got ABC defender ready to go, ready ready for you, and, you know, you've, you've just got to get out there, do your best, and but it's, it's trying to get that quick play of the ball for is, the next guy. Is it actually true that, Riesling, has Yardage just gone down because he can't get that quick play after one third? <laughs> <laughs> I love Riesling. We, had, we had, a good, had a good connection. But um, no, that's it. I mean, as I said, I, I being that senior guy there, I thought it was my my job to try and to try and lead and, and do that. So that's what I, I tried to do. I did. I think, it, I, I think well, it's weird because I thought when you went to York and you... you They'd not realise that how much you change the game. But somebody might have been for this and have questioned me and said, but, but I think you became some when you pay a bit more, which for, let's say you're oh yeah, we've had to pay a bit for Ben John Bishop, whatever, right? 
And then they're expecting you to do these 70 yard catch, you know, mid air, bang, the bish finish upside down, the 60 yard break. But suddenly, this kid comes who's got an unbelievable yardage game. It actually devalues it a bit because the ones who don't know rugby, I'm probably aiming this at two or three, so you wouldn't see that what benefit this kid's doing for you. You don't get the stats. How many times I used to say when Reese got in, now this is not against Reese, this is me speaking. When I used to like sit there and say, oh, Reese's carries are unbelievable. I say, yeah, but he's not taking first one offline. He's not taking the one that you don't want. When you know how many times you've looked up and I watch it every week, there'll be six duck their heads. There'll be, there'll be ones who touch the ribs. There'll be ones who are still getting the hand. You know it. Players know it because you sit there laughing. I think it's a bit more, not generic, but it's a bit more, everyone knows the places now. So it's like, where were you? Liam Tyndall on Saturday were running 60 metres across the pitch to take a carry on the opposite edge and then sprinting back. Uh, I said this about Liam. He, Liam will build his career on that. Other people say, Liam, has he got the skill? Has he got this? Has he got that? I'd rather concentrate on what he has got. He's got absolute immense work rate, absolute pace at the top level. A bit like you're saying, no offence to Tom Briscoe, but he had an unbelievable career, probably a better England career than you. Uh, it, this is only my opinion, but I'd have had you above Tom. I always thought, oh God, if you watch Bish on a on a on a on a thing, it's a different world. But Tom orchestrated a game that suited to get in the England side. You, when you got in the England side, I can remember saying, oh yeah, but we're after that yardage. Yeah. Tom gives us that yardage. Do you get? Do you agree yeah, with yeah, that? Yeah, no, well, that's that was that was it, was it? You had uh, Ryan all one side and and Bish other side, and like you said, they were just yardage quick. And Jermaine to go from Tom, didn't he? Yeah. Jermaine come in and he had the biggest yardage game of them all. And he come and got it, so we're like, that's the way we're going up. Then Monte. Yeah, I think with York, York were a bit, bit different because York, just a crazy year. We lost Morgan Smith in pre-season. We lost uh, Brandon O'Hagan for most of the year. We lost all our halfbacks. So then it was a case of just your backs, just get in there, try and get 15, 20 carries, try and get us going forward. So it's sort of, you know, obviously that X factor that they expected and weren't yeah. happy that they didn't get or whatever. They couldn't get it because there was no one to. To get us out, you know, exactly. to get us that ball out wide. So, I challenged it loads of times. You know, I, laughing. I think one game we had me and Chris Clarkson playing half. So, <laughs> Sorry. You know, so yeah, it, that was a uh, you know just just an unlu- unlucky. If year. you're advising a young player, base you've got Evan Lawler here yesterday, young centre, young winger, uh, nineteen, probably hundred kilos. Again, if I repeat, players don't be writing it down and trying to DM them. He's he's you. <laughs> he's he's if you. Could say to add one piece of advice of a, a young lad, would, 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 which 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 component to the game on day back would you tell him to practice, or all of them? Yeah, I'd, I'd say practice. So first and foremost, I think high ball is essential these days. Uh, but catching above your head is is everything. But yeah, the, probably those carries. You know, that's that's the carry. It's body position into into contact. Really, you know, you're trying to. Ultimately, you're trying to isolate one defender, so you're only running at one rather than getting carried by two or three um, and trying finding the floor. But that's coming out, going into contact. So yeah. if, you've, if you've got two in front of you, if you try and isolate one, so you know a bit of footwork, whatever you do to get to one guy, it's a lot easier to running into one guy's chest than running into two guys. Who I mean, didn't to look at that. Yeah. I think Tindall yeah. always ends up with four blokes. It's a bit <laughs> yeah. That's a great point, that bitch. That would be great for young Liam because you're saying there you're looking for that bit of a one. Whereas we probably looked and gone, I think Tommy Makins is probably, I mean, get Tommy is due after Briscoe. Tommy come along and I know the way. Who took, I, I, full belt, taking yeah, the ball. Yeah, yeah. But Tommy's clever at that, what you just said. He, you very rarely get, I don't think I've ever seen Tommy hit. Yeah. Well, you, you're looking for space. You're looking, look, footwork is you know, obviously, obviously, you know, your best friend, isn't it, really? Yeah. They're coming at you, like you said, baseball bats ready to go, shoulder to shoulder. You're just looking for that little second that you can buy to get yourself down and up and, and get your team going. So. And you, historically, you've, you mentioned, is it also good to have a good centre? How, how important is your centre? Well, that's, yeah, that's ideal. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you always laugh with us for this, because <laughs> If you've got a good edge, yeah, you're laughing as well, aren't you? So the, the Mickey job... Give us an idea, Bish, for people who are watching the show, what difference is having the callum of this world against the central cap, do that pass or cap? Re- how, how important is it having a good reader because you're going to have to jam in on centre your centre and partnership defensively is everything isn't it yeah well, definitely you know wing wing centre defensively like you said 
the, the name of the game is to create that overlap with a fullback. So, you know, wing centre, half back, back rower. You've got to work as a unit, but wing centre generally, you you're your guys who are going to have to jam and you've got to be in, in sync in what you're doing. If if your centre goes, you've got to follow. If your centre sits off, you've got to sit off. So yeah, it's it takes some building, and um, I think that's one thing that I've really liked about Sheffield is I've got Chris Wellham, I've got Anthony Fakri. You know, I've seasoned players who are smart and have been there and done it so we're all on the sort of same wavelength and it's just uh, last year I just think it's, it's worked really well together and you know, hopefully it can, can do the same this year because I watched it we were watching you know if you look at weekend I mentioned him now but Lewis Roberts had, I thought had a fantastic debut he, he, he scored but then about 20 minutes what a character this kid's going to be he, he is he's very untainted by the game do, 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 do you understand me? He's not going to play the game. He's just going to do it his way. Whether it's <laughs> yeah. good or bad, you're going to see. He, we we couldn't believe after the game. He, so he scored a four yarder, and on debut he's beat the telly. The telly on his inside. Oh, four, on thirty meters, and then he's drunk fullback Zach. Zach stays there. And he dummy Zach, and I said to Rowan and him are coming towards us, and I said Rowan should he have passed? He went. No, no, he backed himself. But he's the grin. <laughs> he's then give Rowan elbow and gone. Thinking they don't know for their kid to get it for. He just doesn't. He's got got that. What they get. The, hopefully they don't get to him. Yeah. And the the mafia don't. <laughs> um, 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 um. But this he's so alive and 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 so alive with his opinions and his and his and his face. He, he, he's talking. He's like, eh, what do you think? And then he says, you know, when he scored his try, he was like, I can't believe I got finger. I was like, because well, I slid and scored tries and the ball booted because I looked up and my uncle's going. <laughs> <laughs> but you know and he, and he can't stop laughing when he's telling you he's like uh, bloody hell and then, and then he's off and then I'm watching him and he's he's done for feet and he's top 10 when he crowd he's, he knows everybody on everywhere I think he'd have stayed there till 2 in morning just sat there <laughs> whereas historically you've got the I shouldn't call it the mafia but hey get you sent back in quick alright don't get carried away with anything Scored a try, all right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And I'm thinking, come on, Lewis, don't let him get be that person who was like happy to sit with crowd and happy to. And I saw his into at the game, and Ashton's got it. Ashton's got that ring. There's few got it. He's not bothered. He's just Ashton. Do you get me? Ashton famously stood up at Leeds and they said, "What do you think will happen in this game?" It like Leeds v Saints, and he went, "Oh, whoever it were." And he goes, "Yeah, I think we'll put forty on them." <laughs> Their table were next to Aston's and everything went quiet. He didn't give up, he just carried on talking. Yeah, yeah they're not that good, you know. And I was like, <laughs> Lewis has got it after a game, he's talking, he's like, Yeah, yeah, we'll be strong this year. I'm thinking, <laughs> Well, he played one game, you know what I mean? <laughs> but he taught brilliant and he, and he just a breath of fresh air. And he could be, we discussed on the way on, if the no, center, no, 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 if, if Newman oh. obviously is not going to be back and if. No, no, he's also in. It could be. It could actually debut. You know, in the first team, everyone thinks Lewis because he's been about a bit. I mean, you know what Rowan calls him, the Big Red. <laughs> he says he did his interviews and how did think he went the Big Red did well. Don't worry about that. <laughs> so he's already got a character about that. I can see. Well, he could look, debut. He put a photo on Instagram and all the comments were the Big Red, the Big Red. <laughs> oh so yeah, he would, Rowan got oh, it no. straight away. You've got it in the Leeds marketing. The Big yeah. Red. He's gonna, but he's. Uh, his story fascinated me because, and I hope this helps people. Bish will know this, the lads will know this. Somebody's asked us on the week, Bish, how do we get our players? Well, it is it's a great story. And it's obviously all about me. <laughs> 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 so he's, he's, I'm watching Corey Hall, you got me? York, and they're playing Swinton. Corey's playing out of his skin, loads of carries, thinking about a break in first three minutes of the game. Are you were there, Jimmy? Yeah. It made a break, Corey, and we were like, but I keep seeing this raw boned. He's not, you know, he's not got, he's, he's, he's white as them, white, you know. And, and they were a lot lighter. And, right? he, and, he, and he just kept going and going. Then he made an hour break, he said. And I'm thinking, this kid's not give up. Never once. The game got tasty then. Young Anson, we saw, and it got tasty. But he, I've never seen a kid not give up, and he kept his front. And he, I think I watched him on telly afterwards, and I'm like, they got beat about 50 on telly or whatever it was. And he's still arguing with, I'm better, I'm better than you. He's still verbaling somebody and I give it. And I thought, that's character to get beat 50. Then I find out he's 19. And I, and I thought, hey, I'll go see it. Anyway, I arranged to meet him. 18, man. Well, I, I went to meet him and his mum and dad were there. 
I get this right and I don't want to get it wrong, but it's like a charity shop, as in they sell things, but it's like, so if, if in the pandemic or before people were struggling with money, they've got this massive supermarket where you buy bread for five pence and and just amazing. Uh, Mum and dad, look, you know, what lovely people, both martial arts and Lewis is laughing behind him and I'm winking. You know what I mean? He goes, no, I, I, didn't, I didn't enjoy it. You know, he's, he, you can see it smiling. Then, I, then he says, oh yeah, I played for Salford. What do you mean? Like, oh yeah, I went to Salford's Academy. I think I played first team at like 17 and I went, ah, no, how have you ended up? You've ended up at Swinton, which it saved his life. Swinton, by the way, that they give him a platform, which is good for a lot of young players. You get that platform to show yourself. They give him 20 games to go and show himself. So I met him and I walked back in car and you have that feeling that you've watched some of that and you've met him now and you think, yeah, he's got a chance. I then didn't realize he stood up at the end of the meeting. He's six three. I think probably bigger now. I think they said he's six foot. I went, oh my god, he's tall. He's he's that. And he come back in, and I'm like, wow, we need to do it. My first phone call when I've asked him, what's your ambition in this game? Or do you let? He went, I'm on my Lee support. So why don't you go Lee? Why have you not got anyway? Long story short, the deal, the deal got done. He got to Lee, but he's had a nightmare. <laughs> Played debut, his witness gets second, nearly man at March, outstanding. Then we don't see him. <laughs> so I'm bringing up Chesney, what's happening? He said, Oh, Lamb's got, they've got this, they're paying for the, you know, they've got these players. The, the, Lewis is then coming off bench for three. I think he ended up getting five games all year. I think we played him once last year. Yeah. Did he play? Yeah. I think he did. I think he was centre. Yeah. yeah. So we, and I watched him last game of the season against witness, and he, he looked like he, he wasn't the same. There was some, do you know what I mean? There was some not right. Uh, he obviously won. I think he had a clause. I don't know what it was, but he, he, to, to leave, and he, and he just said, "I don't think I'm going to get a regular, a regular game." Here. I think you know, I'm looking at what Lee are doing. They're buying these type of players, which might not get me the games. So I spoke to Rowan, and I said, "Look, Rowan, I think he's got some, and I think if he were in the right environment for Leeds, he's probably the perfect environment with the coach who loves to develop, the club who's not on history of developing." And, uh, think, and actually a couple of clubs coming for him then suddenly were like wow he has got something I have a feeling he could write his own script this kid right from backfield I think he's got a bit he, did you notice on the video he's faster than a lot of people he looks a bit sharper than everyone thought everyone thought oh has he got a yard short did look like a yard short when he, when he took and he's on the, on the video he said yeah I got done off Ricketelli. 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 Ricketelli goes, but one, one, one now, innit? <laughs> <laughs> just where, like, this is, you, you could just let him, do, do you know what? Let him talk. Just let a young kid to be, talk. To be honest with you, Dad, going off what Lewis's journey is, and this might, it won't get me in trouble, but I guess it be shocking to some people is, it's not for all the young players out there that might be released by reserves, that might be released by certain things and drop down. In some ways, it's got it's got it's got its benefits over doing the reserve way, exactly. doing the League One and building yourself up. Because we've had a few, obviously Lewis. We had Kieran who this year before his injury was meant to pop off. There's a couple that's coming up. Obviously, famously, um, Wormsley and them, aren't they? They there's certain there's certainly a way there because first Gailey, Gailey, Gailey yeah. apologies, yeah. Kevin Brennan, and the biggest one of yeah. all. Wait, and then wait, and then the first, and then the main point about it is you're playing against men at such a young age. It, de it develops your personality. It develops your toughness. It develops all the things that sometimes you honestly don't get in the reserve level. And I think for lads who. I, you know what I mean, I think we've, we've all had lads, haven't we, that drop down and you can see it, it just breaks their heart. And and I've been saying it this year, like, no, no, this could be a benefit to you. If it's not quite worked out, you could actually end up being a better player than, what, let's say, they give you another one-year contract at one of these uh, reserve clubs. You could actually end up... Yeah, Jude, with... you've got Jude, that Jude. Yeah. The, but then they've got to take the chance, Joe. Yeah. They're going to do what Lewis did and, and did oh, play. Oh, 100%, yeah. So they've got to go and work hard and do it. And I think that's... For some young lads who are watching and parents who might be like, "Oh, stay at stay at that club. You're at you're at the mighty Leeds Wigan." Set, you know what I mean? Don't be afraid to drop down because it might not be as glamorous, but you'll you can end up being a much better player and tougher player for it. And, and uh, round of applause. Uh, let me just bring this question in here now because it links in nicely. So it's it's from um, Benjamin Wheeler. Can you ask what percentage of youth team players make it, and where do the ones who don't go? So you know, this is what, stats. It's what so we're talking about. Somebody said the stats about a week ago. I think it's 
we've got Mick famously did it on the show two years ago and said if you picked a sport in the UK rugby's number one or two to get a player to international you've got more chance of being a rugby league player and playing Super League and international than any other sport apart from one Mick had that stat so it is a, it's a great chance what what chances are I think thing he said he called it Simon Bell did it on the show and he called it a special name I, I don't know he'll quote it do you remember Sam he kept mentioning this one word and that's what codes it that's the measurement and he said he's looking for he said some some X some X year you get four or five some year you got one they just had a blank year yeah, he used it 50 times and we asked him what it meant. And this is how many players that they retain. Retention from the Super academy. League, yeah, to and Super League. Oh, and might play one game. Yeah, transition to Super League. And then the rest, champ one, there's a lot. I think that's quite a high percentage. And if we, if you think of it like this, if, if you take the 12 Super League clubs alone, now there's the reserves um, and the, the academy. So there might be... 10 lads each year who, who then become too old for the academy. So it, 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 even at the lower end, it, you're probably looking at potentially 100 lads a year who are too old to play in the academy. There's a chance they'll get kept on for reserves, but it's, that's a lot of people who then need to find the alternative route, which is what Joe's saying. You know, what, what we try and do is we're, we're not desperate to keep them in reserve grade and if they get released from Castleford reserves can we get them straight to another Super League reserves the League One route or Championship if they're very fortunate is as good a route as any isn't it I to, said to it get might experience. get me in trouble but I I at this moment you keep saying it might get me in trouble I, uh, by I, some of the boss, res- no one's going to get us in trouble by some we, of the reserves we are the <laughs> well yeah Everything. I think I, I honestly at this moment with how the reserve was last year where all them games got you know I think I've done on the show a couple of times or how I really didn't like how it happened but uh, at this moment I'd prefer to send them to a League One club than keep them in like, than like go from cast to lead you know what I mean well obviously I've just picked up two right but pick from going reserve to reserve and trying to find your way, it works. I'd go, I'd go to Champ League One any day and go play as many games. It's it, and we found that last year, didn't we? Van? You, if when you've got, a, when if you've got, got, if you've got, 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 X amount reserves. Oh, I'd rather go to a Super League reserves than go to Championship. It's no to do with rugby. Get that into your heads. It's hundred percent to do with status. And people around him who don't understand the game say, "No, no, you're better off in the shop window. You're better off around the first teamers." It, it, it's a myth. Ninety nine percent of players who dare. You actually got a lad. And I only ask you both a question. There's a famous player who played Super League. And played in the grand final three years after leaving Super League club and going to play amateur for twelve months. You're not allowed to answer. It's the Leeds. It's Leeds Rhinos player. And he played Super League within about eighteen months. Then he played in the Super, but he dropped out of the academy to go to amateur. Okay. Yeah, that he plays of... open age. No, it's. Uh, is it? You keep looking at bases. It's not bases. It's yeah. Bases. <laughs> <laughs> Have I got that wrong, all right? Go say it again. <laughs> I've lost. You went to play. I, wanted, I wanted them to both sit there for ages, and it. So you left academy. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't make to it. go and play open age for Queens. Yeah. Well, it was. Yeah. I guess scholarship. I didn't make the cut. Yeah. yeah. Queens I didn't, didn't make the cut. And how long did it before your debut for Leeds when you come back? Uh, oh, I'm awful with years, but. I made my debut in 2008. 2008, I think. But it was funny, I was going through it in my head, I like, I know this story, yeah, yeah, it's Leeds, yeah, this, and then I'm like, oh, it's Yeah, I did make the cut. Um, went back to amateur, won everything with Queens, and then came back and uh, had a little bit at Unsley. Came back to Leeds, I remember uh, Bastian brought me back, sitting on bench ages, came on f- and scored off a scrum, went like 50, 60 metres. Um, yeah, then, yeah, a couple, I made my debut, one season, played a couple of games, a couple more, and then went on loan to, to London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the year after you played the And then the I grand co- final. came back and then played in the grand final. Yeah, Brilliant. Yeah. Jim, what were Sorry, Jim. Uh, it, it was along the similar lines. It was saying that it's it's very hard for the young lads to, 
to leave the status. Yeah, I was go- I was going to say that, and a lot of our thing is to try and use examples of players who have gone the alternative route and looked at League One and Championship, and it's a big. It's a big environmental change, you know, the starting, look at the two young lads who've come out of Leeds, who've joined you this year, Mackay and yeah. Joe. They're now in the car for three hours longer than they were every session. They're the number of days they're in is less. And it, it's getting them to understand and having that trust that it's as good a route as any. And the more that Super League coaches start to look down into the championship, which they have been doing for a few years now, it gives them that, that, that belief that they can get back there. You know, and it's, it, it's, we found last year, when you're talking about a player and, and they ask where they've been playing and you say reserves and they're here, and then you tell them that you've got someone who's been playing in League One and they've played 15 games, these were, these were in a far better situation. You know, and that's, that? that's a challenge for the reserve grade. Like you hoped last year, it would be better. We were worried it wouldn't be until the reserve grade becomes more consistent and a better standard, we are going to be in a situation where a young lad is better off getting off to a League One club and playing, or, or if we're lucky, a championship club and playing, which is a huge, a huge ask, isn't it, for an 18, 19 year old to be straight ready for 20 championship games. But that is, that is in our, in our opinion, often the best route. Because um, you, you used to argue with coaches back in the day, if you don't, I'm speaking for you here, so if I'm wrong, pull me up. But I think you used to argue with I'll coaches. You, up on that. you used to argue with coaches back in the day about looking at League One champ. I remember sat in the car when you went, look at these young lads, they're in, he's proving it against men. And it seems like now, whether they were listening to you or not, you'll probably claim they, they did. That they now, they now, I think they have the last couple of years, they are now looking at Champ League One over another reserve team to bring through the top, bring through the next young crop of great players at a club. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Listen, you've got the word out, Sam. You've got it. Can you repeat that again? Cohort. And that's what he was saying. That's what's called a measurement vehicle, what they use for academy players into, into things. So, the cohort would be X amount percent, but I think it was the cohort year were three to five. He said, and the bad yeah, one last year was. Yeah, yeah. They were saying like the difference between the two is like, yeah, some players can benefit from the senior dropping down, mm. and others can benefit from being like leaders in the academy side. Mm. Like and there's a big physical part to play, isn't there? You, we worry all the time about young lads going straight into Super League or even Championship because. If the body's not ready at 18, they're going to get battered it, it, and it can really shorten the career, increase chances of injury. Some lads might be might be in a physical situation where they're, they're ready to go and try it at championship level. Others, it might be better for League One. Others, it might be better to stay in the reserves. It, it's still quite rare you get many big, big old blokes playing in the reserve grade. So it's just a nicer transition. It, it's got to be right for that player, their size, their weight their physical development and and just find the right path. To be honest with you, it usually means, i found with my experience, but it is, take Mikey, like, we know where he wrote, he just changed his life. He was made to play men's rugby. Mm-hmm. It was not that, he was good in the academy, but not in the same level as when he went to Newcastle. Yeah. And he exploded against men and he found it that easy that he were like looking round. But he dare verbal a grown man, you know, what's scared. Yeah. You're shit, you're too slow, I'm gonna do you. That was it. So then you threw him into it was like it was probably that happy in that environment. Hey and by the way, they're gonna couple of quid match terms, so they're like you know, we don't want to talk about wages, but the wages are horrendous, aren't they? You know, you come through the system, it's it's we touched on this bitch in the in the living room, just just moving on to this. And we're gonna try and change the game this year. Everything we do, we're trying to change the game. We've got some great comments down here, we'll read them out in a minute about clubs who have done a lot more on social media and they, they seem to be I'm not going to say it's all us but it is if I'll be honest but it, it, it's pushing and pushing the boundaries and calling people out and pushing it and we will continue to itemise that but we, I had this debate with you and I want to have it out with lads here and hopefully you enjoy it is 29, 30 year old player doing exactly the same job so a Ben Jones Bishop at 29 or 30 and I'm not going to say a figure let's say 100 plus right yeah, I'm not saying exact exact. You're not wakey. No, is <laughs> <laughs> with left Salford. Is 
the same player at 22 played in grand final and were probably if not better I'm not saying you had more, you, your carries were better there but you know some of the things you did as a young man why is the 80 round difference Bish in the same player uh, I think it's yeah it's a funny one I think experience or of what we term ex, what we call experience age is valued I think at, over here like you said a lot of going back from my experience probably still is now as, as, as you just said a lot of the young kids now you, you're not on a lot of money and then it's slowly you know you're never going to reach a lot of money and c- clubs are what's what's the benefit of a club giving a 22 year old who they know he can be great, really great but why give him 100 when we can give him 40, 50 Big. no one's going to say anything like, yeah, but can I, I ask you like, can carry I, on with that can, oh, carry sorry. on do, 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 just absolutely answer the question though, but you think that's just because the game's stuck in its ways. Do you agree with it? No, no, I don't agree with it. If if you're good enough. I think maybe that twenty one it depends how proven are they? I don't know what what how many games well, I've yourself, played. I think are, yourself, they, are they on the international stage? Are they myself? I think twenty three. Yeah. You, you, we, we, can we t- can we say it out loud what you were on at twenty three? You want me? Yeah, you're probably on what, fifty? Um I would Forty-five, yeah, a bit less because you you had I had to make international to That's make it. that fifty dinner. So you're at Salford, you're on your one thirty, one twenty, whatever it was. I'm at, uh, yeah, what's the difference in the player at Salford and, and Leeds? I think at Leeds it was the structure, wasn't it? Like that's how they do things. I think um, the lesser teams you're going to have to pay more to attract the be- to, to attract better players. That's just how it is. That's just in any sport. If you're a worse team, you're going to have to pay more money to get the better player or you're going to have to keep finding diamonds in the rough to constantly churn over to do that to do it that way um, why it's done that way I don't know I think something the big game's not big on is obviously a players union I think you know you look what the NRL boys are doing at the minute Crazy. in terms of what they're doing and I watched a, a podcast on it you know obviously I'm big into NFL I watched a podcast with um their guy in charge of their players' union and, and what's going on with their player contracts and it's just we're obviously we're miles behind aren't we so and if we're constantly dictated to by owners in a salary cap who can put a blank field on what you've got you know unless we're willing to do something about it you can't really break that mould can you yeah. unless you unless every every company is going to have a a Derek a Kukash a a Warrington who were willing to splash out big money but then it seems like the salary cap is stopping teams doing that to benefit the teams who can't do that to try and keep parity but there's not really parity is there the same teams are at the top the same teams are at the bottom <laughs> so I've, I've got two things well oh, brilliant point sorry I missed that deserves that one two things I think one thing that you see in other sports is that I think rugby league it, it, it actively does a disservice to people who peak early. We don't really get into rugby league like talking about peaks and you know what I mean they're doing other sports quite a lot, don't always peak there. Rugby league, if you peak early in rugby league, your your average earnings not very much. If you peak like if you peak at thirty, you you're making loads of money. So it's a it's a funny one, isn't it? Where I think you should probably just be paid what you deserve at that moment in time, maybe based on your performance. It's tough to do that based on contract length, but maybe something there, but my one question, Bish, and I want it as honest as possible, as honest as possible. <laughs> How much does it experience, the word experience, actually make that much of a difference in the game? Like, you you know, you're speaking about your Chris Wellman, you did mention, to be yeah. fair, saying, yeah, experience, it does make a difference. But... How in your time playing with younger players that might be at the same level, and how much does the word experience maybe get overused, or how how rightly does it get used? Um, good question. <laughs> I think now I'm older, and now I sort of, I think when you when you're a youngster and you come into a team and you've got a bit like Lewis we're talking about there, you've got no fear. You, you know, you're willing to do anything, and if you get found out, you know the senior boys in the team, the experience in the team will, will sort of bail you out. So I sort of see that. So I, I think the biggest, to try and answer it, the biggest way I found it is dropping from Super League to Championship. And when I, now from where, when I was at York to when I was at Sheffield, now, I think 
that experience, you can read games, you're more proactive, you can sort of manipulate games a lot better. Um, I think, I'm not saying young players can't do that because obviously, you know, the better players will be able to do that. But a lot of it, I think you're reactive and you're, you're not quite... You might be there athletically, but you just can't read the game. You can't see what's coming. Whereas I think maybe maybe that's why the experience is that sort of the you know what the what you're paying for. Yeah. If that, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So that's from my point of view, that's sort of the biggest difference I think between experience and that and that sort of young thing that we're talking about. But then just flipping back to what we were saying and how sort of the contracts. Those those young guys who are progressing and are really good, they're generally on lower wage wages because they're tied in with years, aren't they? So I know <coughs> Leeds. The only, way, the only you know, you're tied in. So year one and two look great, but you've got another three years on the back of that where you get the top. Up. You're not. But if you want to earn, if you want that new deal, that's great. You get the top up, but then you've got the next two three years where. So it's like a, it's like a cycle. So you know personally. To break out of the cycle, those last two years at Leeds, you know, I was not where I wanted to be, you know. So, but that's you know that's I think that's where probably the difference is. Well, that's probably why the younger lads are sort of limited yeah. in, in a, to a certain level. Yeah. But I think that's going to have to break now because we're seeing NRL. They're just coming in and pinching all the young kids now, aren't they? So mm. something's going to have to give. Yeah, no, hopefully, not not that it's a good thing the NRL will come in to pinch, but we need we need a few things to try and get rid of that system where for a player to earn what they're worth, they have to extend and then they're always chasing, aren't they? And the fact that players, you were always very confident about yourself, Grade always says about in the contracts and being happy to let that contract go and be, be strong. If players are now more aware that there are better opportunities financially, and I don't mean necessarily going to the NRL, but even to another club. Hopefully, they'll be less likely the is to. You can't go till you're 23. To, well, but less likely to place, go yeah. into those those long longer contracts. And, and just going back to the original thing, the word experience. I've heard a lot of co- coaches link that with consistency. Yeah. So, so I think one thing young, young players. One easy criticism is that, yeah, of course they can have a nine hour 10 performance, but then they're likely to dip and then go up again and dip and go up. Whereas what experience tends to go hand in hand with is more consistency. So week in, week out, you might get that eight hour 10 performance. Which, Wait, what, I, they, oh, just to finish your point. Yeah, I'm a big, a bit controlling with that. It's just, I just want, you know, yeah, you you speak, speak, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's hard, it's hard, <laughs> yeah. you've got to, you've got to, you've got to work it. on it. But, I'd always rather see a young lad whose potential of being a 9 out of 10 over an older boy who we know is a 7. It's different if you're a, a 9 week in, week out. I, but if you're a, if you're that steady 7 and you're getting paid 50 grand, I'd want to see this younger player, a younger player who's as good. I want to see them because their potential's more. And of course, they might have that little dip in a game. And that's where the experienced players lift them back up again and they go again. But my my issue with it, Jim, is that I think watching it sometimes, and I'm, I obviously never. Sometimes them players that get paid a lot that have experience, their average is sadly a five out of ten and a six out of ten, and I think that that got to a stage at some points in the last couple of years where it's like whether they. That if they've had one or two good years in championship or even in Super League, sorry, I didn't mean point to you, <laughs> but I said if yeah, yeah. no, I didn't, I didn't. But if they were there, they can, they, they, they can go to any club and just keep dropping down and keep getting paid a lot more than a young player, even though their average is honestly yeah. a five out of ten. That's the one that I'm more concerned about. Like a, a base average is eight, nine out of ten every week. I've got no issue with Bish getting paid what he's deserved. I think my more issue is the ones who just hang about and slowly drop down the rags but getting paid the same amount because they've relied on a year yeah. from three or four years ago. Well, I'm sure that, and I'm sure somebody like Brett Ferris falling down the leagues, I think, is it Doncaster now? I'm sure Brett might say, well, yeah, I got big money at Featherstone, I got big money there and I deserved it, you know, because I, I played at the top of level and then I'm just going to filter down until I get to 
most money at Doncaster. I got most money at Featherstone. You know, that does happen. Historic, it does happen. Uh, you're right, Joe. Does that relate to performance? I don't think so a lot of times, but that's historically, again, how the game... But it's all, it's definitely part of one thing. It, it's not... It's, it's, it's the coach's values. So if you've got a coach, me, me as a coach, I, I never really bothered with... I would have preferred a younger... When I coached a, a young lad coaching... Yorkshire League, I can remember like my squad were young when I was chairman of Doncaster because I felt they'd listen more and I like to talk. No, no, I, <laughs> I, I, I thought I wanted to learn and part of that process and what I enjoyed was seeing somebody learn and then become the person they can become. I, I did it with business, I did you know, we laughed the other day, probably got 10 or 12 of my lads have all gone to be multiple. That's what you should be here for. That's for me, coaching. Coaching should be doing that. I don't know if I get that much of a kick out of. Bish just said there, I wouldn't have to coach Bish. Mark Aston, he said it, he said it. I, I, I just said to Bish, he's right what Mark's done with Bish. What do you want to do? How do you feel? If I think you're pillaging me, I'm going to come for you. But otherwise, it's your it's your thing. I don't think that is coaching. I think it's management. I think you swap at 27 and 200 games, you go, you know what? I'm just going to manage his knees, his legs, his life. He's got three kids. I'm going to get down this. this that, that's man management. If you want to be a coach, you'd go for the younger players because I, 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 I'd say this to you. You and Callum in your palm on that right edge, Ryan Hall on that left edge. Without doubt, that was from the best rugby I've ever seen. You were all young men. Yeah. But then Scott Donald were on more than what he is. Yeah. They were on, you know, Scott were on 100, 100 odd thousand when he left, I, I, I believe. So he was on more money than all lot of youths by a lot. But youths... You're watching the emergence of superstars. You know what I mean? You were thinking, my God. But if somebody said, is it fair that Callum's just ripped the league apart and he plays for debut at 17 against Melbourne Star? I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, World Club. Yeah. Callum Watkins doing things at 19 that we've not seen at Leeds for a lot of years. But he was on 18 grand. Key Senior at 33. At the right, by the way, one of the legends. Keith at 34, 35. We're still getting... Loads more than Callum, but Callum were making three line breaks a game, the next superstar of the game. They never collided. Keith retired before Callum was still. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what that's what I'd like to change. It's not fair in any job. I mean, give us give us some answers. Please comment. You've all got work in some industry. You might work in sport industry, media, uh, builders, whatever. Do the young ones on the sites get paid less if they do the same job? Tesco's, if you're a young man at Tesco's but you do the same job as, is it done on age? Or is that fair, I think, no, no, I think it is a lot. I know, yeah. yeah I no, know. I don't mean apprenticed. Once no, no, I mean, no, it's no. not age, it's experience. There's, there's a difference between experience and age. Mm. And experience is, once a player, when Callum Watkins has only played four games, even though anyone who... No, knew, no, 40. Yeah, Four. this is what I'm saying. If he's only played a few games, you can't go chuck it all out. Him. But once you've no played, yeah, yeah. once you've played, bat him out. And and it probably is 40, yeah. You know, you need those two. You need to back up a first year because everyone's going to go after one year when they're holding the cards. Well, he's had one year. Let's have another look. But there's absolutely no excuse why I'm not going to pick out the name. But if, if there's a Super League player who's still very young, but he's now had three seasons... At a very high level at one of the uh, good, uh, one of the top teams, there's absolutely no doubt that they should be then earning the same, if not more, than the lad who's got four years more experience in him. You know, and it's Why hard. did you pull me up then, saying that you should get paid more than Joe in our company? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I accept that there's got to be lawyers and some family. Members. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I'll but the but yeah, sorry, but I would just think, but I think in some industries also. So there's there is a match. I know I'll use my my girlfriend who works in a shop in America called Trader Joe's. Coincidentally, but there it's done on if you average every six months you get like a like a one pound one dollar pay rise, and then so some of the so you see at Trader Joe's these fifty year olds still there. They've worked there for forty years, and I'm like, what's going on? Like I don't understand why all these people are just happy. Sat, no offense, happy at a supermarket when some of them are brilliant. You speak to them, they're like. Well, it's because they've been there that long that they're up, the wages is as much as someone who's in a top end. Like, I, I couldn't wrap my head around it. They're on, some of them are on 50, 60K for bagging the groceries. And it's like, 
wow, like, it's unbelievable. So I guess quite a lot of injuries, I think, do do it on, as Jim said, experience. But then some also do it if, I know there's a big thing in some industries where they don't hire 30-year-olds, anyone over 30, because because that means they require a certain wage packet, where obviously because of kids, because of housing, it makes sense, but they require a certain wage packet where if you're 20, you, you can get hired into a job pretty easily, even if you're miles worse. So I, but so I guess it depends on the industry as well. And it depends you, on the you, person. You get, it's what you bring as well. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a package. Did what? what? That's worst joke for her. What, what's <laughs> the joke? Trader, joke? Trader Joe's twice then. Tom <laughs> Frankie, you'd say it. No, it's yeah. it's a because yeah, it, it's a good it's a it's a good it's a gross. It's, it's, it's well, yeah. in America. No like one knows. Saying, what... Just going back to that, like when we, when I come into that Leeds team, there were me, Callum, and I just felt. I just go back to it about Lewis. You, you could. You probably had games where we were up and down, up and down, but you had the experienced lads in the side who then pulled you, who carried you some games. Mm-hmm. Obviously, some games, you know, you were outstanding. They set the base, you you smashed it. But other games when you're down here, they just dragged you along. Um, and I guess it, it's the package. Of what does what do you bring to the club? Yeah. You know, there's, there's obviously on the field, there's a changing room, there's off the field, there's, you know... Are the yeah. club using? Yeah. Are the club marketing you? Are you speaking to sponsors? You know what? What else are you doing on the field that the club can generate? Use you to generate sort great, of things. Can I, so, can I just discern a difference? I guess my personal one is discerning a difference between someone who can do that, like Chris Clarkson at York and even at Leeds and famous I love Carl Ablett because he would he might I might be miles off but he always seemed to deliver that 7.58 performance every when everyone else played bad Abbo would be there and do a tough carry and he'd trigger along and he'd probably be what you I'm talking mainly about the ones who I guess don't do that who may be at 30 have a great performance one week but then will play bad six weeks but Bishop, you missed Bishop's point there Joe sorry you yeah. don't saying yeah no he's saying mind. Chris Clark so you've just said Chris Clarkson and Carl Ablett Clarky and Abbo never wanted to sell themselves as being an image right. They just did the job, what they thought they were. Chris was always quite happy with what he got. Abbo finished probably on 100 grand, probably happiest person in Leeds. Abbo never, but Abbo won't be, I can remember Danny doing two or three things for Leeds per Trust. week. Danny were everywhere. Danny could definitely be bitter. They were doing bingo calling on a Tuesday, he was doing this on a Wednesday, he was sent everywhere to represent the club. He got, he got service, what's it called? Uh, community man a year yeah, every yeah, yeah. year because he did most and he was the pin up he yeah. was the great you know he was the maverick of the team he was the one who what Bish is on about Danny did all that and never got paid probably anywhere near what well put it this way famously Matty Orford came to Bradford reputedly on about 160 Danny had won grand final at that time I think he were on 35 kegs Danny would dance I think he scored 38 tracks same year you know he he, he it doesn't make sense in a lot of areas unless you work off the old-fashioned socialist views of it'll come to you. You know, eventually, yeah. when you when you get to thirty, bish, you'll, get that. you'll be like Keith Senior. Yeah, yeah. You'll earn hundred grand. And it, that's that's what you ways, have to believe in. That and then yeah. the young one has to wait ten years. Yeah. I think there's other ways around it as well. Obviously, a big one at Leeds when I were there that successful period. You know, obviously you, you were down on in terms of contract base basic wage but your bonuses obviously were flying as well so there's that balance there as well but obviously that you know it, it's it was appealing at the time because what were the most successful 10 15 years in the club where you were constantly in grand finals <laughs> yeah. challenge cup finals and everything so obviously that's you know that's that's not a constant you can't keep that up as as we've seen but yeah so ultimately i think it's on it's on the. It's hard for the players to make a stand, I guess, because, like I said, a lot you're tied into contracts, aren't you? Um, but if you know, and at the other end, if if you know, I'm 34 years old now. I, you've mentioned other players who, who are older. If if a club's willing to still pay you at that level, you know, good on you. Good on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. what you're saying is, if you could offer the what you order to a club, I'd. Yeah. Cheap at the price, but yeah. cheap at the price. On that, I, I get it. That's, that's not that hundred percent. Yeah, that's not another one. That's what yeah. I was trying to say. Is I'm not angry at that one because that makes this, sense. If the, the argument would be again, I say now. Would you? If I ask you again, then straight, you've got your Leeds, your, your two grand finals. You won. Yeah, you're at Leeds second grand final. 
you're on, let's say, 75. Let's just, I'm, I don't think you are, but 65 grand, yeah? Do you swap that lead 65 grand for 130 Salford? As a, where are you, Bish? If I said to you tomorrow, where are you going? Where? At my at my at my You've young age and, and the team and team where I was at obviously Leeds, I wanted to win trophies. I w- you know and I was fortunate enough to do that. I won two grand finals, got to two Challenge Cup finals, World Cup challenge, and then you know obviously things happened and um, you know we got to a stage where I, I was going to have to leave to play to play first team football and you know earlier you know he said I, I backed myself I, I was bricking it really you know I've always been in a contract always been stable you know what you're getting and then it comes to free agency and you're a bit like well what if no one values you <laughs> you know mm. I, I might not be on a lot now but I could be on a whole lot less if if, uh, yeah, if so um we, but that, but that's when it worked obviously you know we could we come out of free agency and it sort of changed my opinion and you know I, I wanted to play for my hometown team that didn't materialise. I sort of learned it was a business, and then from that point, ultimately, you know, that's how I trade it. Really, you know, I, obviously, I, I wanted to perform on the field and and uh, play in successful teams. And but the bish now, though, I give you the bish to thirty four. The yeah. choice, where are you going? Thirty four now. I'm I'm looking at you, but if you're you, twenty four so, again, oh, you can you you Can I just jump in there? Because there's something that. I'd, so a big thing as we're watching NFL is actually you're watching the ones who are maybe a year away from retirement, two years away from retirement, taking a veteran's minimum. It's massive in NBA now, but they literally create a veteran's minimum, a veteran's minimum team, which means if you're a certain age, there's a minimum contract that you can to protect the older players, but it's 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 pretty cheap. A lot of them who could earn a lot more go into these teams that can win championships yeah. to win a ship. Finish, yeah, so... Yeah. To expand on the question, would you take a veteran at your age right now? Would you take a veteran's minimum to go Saints, Leeds, Wigan, or stay away what now? And uh, if I'm playing, if I'm going to be playing, I'm I'm going to to a team where I can win. Yeah, and that's okay. that's sort of my goal now. You know, that's that's sort of that's my drive now. It's I need more than you know part time rugby. You know, it's it's a good wage, but you know, it's not. I've got my main stuff that. Pays the bills and keeps the lights on and stuff. The NFL show. The NFL show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so now it's it's a, it's about the challenge and it's about something and you know the plan with with York to to try and you know make that Super League and getting that that didn't quite work. Sheffield, I love the plan. You know, I I went to uni in Sheffield. It sort of ties in. I've, I've got some connection there, and the plan is to build and build and be a team capable of playing at Super League level so wow. that's that's where I'd be at now at, at 24 yeah, yeah if you could choose both that's what I meant if I've not won anything and just just what play a good team or money yeah um, I'd try and win something yeah. there you go yeah. any young player out there yeah. the bitch just said win I think, I think just because when at, at a young age you've got no well, you might you've got no you're not no responsibility I mean you know, now I've got kids I've got a mortgage I've got things like that that I need to Need to look after, but at, at that young age, when I didn't have those things, you know, I'm trying to be the best player I can and get to the top of the game. And, um, but uh, along with that, like you were saying, I think the best thing I ever did in my career was going alone. You know, I, I think that. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry, with that bitch. Yeah, yeah. You well. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> got me down. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that was the, that was the best thing I ever did because I think if you've got an opportunity to play rugby, I think you know you, you need to go and play play rugby and. You know, at Leeds we had you know a great system, and you get taught everything. And you know, in this situation you do this, and then when he's running that way, you tackle in this way. And but when you go into a game, it's you know it's not textbook. Things aren't textbook. You know, things happen differently. And getting that game experience, playing against men, you know, that's that's what I think uh, made me. Just just before I went to the comments, Bish, give us a. And I think someone's going to ring it, read out in a minute all the results at, at weekend. I think yeah, I need to go through. Joe's go to bit. But you give us throughout your thirty-four years, Bish. If you could come back to one year, where are you going? What my best year? Yeah, but you love to your best. I don't. I don't uh, just mean upfield. You was it when you look back, you go God. If you give me time, or where are you going? Uh, where are you I loved. I love that year in London. I love that. So I I just finished my degree in Sheffield. Come back. The comp, the comp had just changed. The reserve comp had just changed to under twenties. I was too old for under twenties, so I was gonna be. I thought I actually might end up at Sheffield because mm. uh, I was living in Sheffield. 
you know, um, well, at first, my first thought was my degree's done. I can concentrate on, on rugby, breaking into the Leeds first team, give it my all, and then, you know, going for a meeting, you're off on loan. So devastated at that. Um, went down to London. I love I loved London, to be honest. I, you know, I love the place. Um, back living with your mates. So a lot of the Northern lads were all living together. Ben Kay, uh, Ben Jones and Luke yeah. Gale. Yeah, yeah. Uh, How did you get the posh house? Gailey Gale and Ben Kay were in a different house, but I, I had I had uh, Ben Jones in mine. Um, yeah. And that were lovely when it compared to theirs, but theirs yeah, were yeah, it was nice house. Yeah, it was pretty good. Um, but you know, I, I enjoyed it, and like you said, so probably probably that year were great. You know, causing havoc out the back with Luke Gale. You know, just but again, it was carefree. It were like I'm here to learn. I'm gonna make mistakes, but the senior lads will. Drag me along when I needed it, um, and then probably I picked three years because I, I can't fit one. Um, first, obviously, first year back at Leeds that were that were a big one, trying to prove myself and get in the first team. I had a like pretty much. Did you play against Leeds of London? You didn't you? Yeah, yeah, Edinburgh. We got the seventy odd nil, I think. Yeah, I full back. I think I'm pretty sure I made double figure tackles. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember yeah, it. Uh, yeah, that wasn't a good day. Um, but no, I think yeah, that first year back at Leeds, I had to fight for my spot on the wing. Um, get that, you know. Obviously, first season playing for your hometown club, go to the Challenge Cup final, go to uh, Old Trafford. Um, then speaking about playing in the England setup, um, and then probably the second year at Wakefield, I think I really enjoyed that year. I think you know we Chesy had came in, sort of give us a bit of bit of confidence, a bit of life and, you know, we went on a great run. I think we just one game, you know, I think we, we gave a, a, away a late try at Saints and that cost us a top, was it top five or top six? I can't remember what it was back then, but yeah, the top six spot. So that, that was, I felt like I, I were a senior player in that team and, and I were delivering every week and then just sort of, you know, settled, family. Yeah, that was a good year. I'm going to give you my uh, memory of your bitch, and I've got many <laughs> in the repertoire. Some we've been, been through a bit, as me and I quite. But you, I always like the flick pass on Danny's Instagram family never Everbrook stride, then you stepped inside. Yeah, yeah. I, I, if you said to me now, I've got it, I, I, it's a flashback. Or, I watched it the other day on YouTube, I wanted to yeah. go and watch it again. Because you didn't take, modern day, you'd have gone outside and gone for a dive. You didn't. Did you think you had momentum to step in? Because you stepped in. Yeah, I stepped in, yeah. Well, it. Yo, Warrington, we had a we had a couple of battles. That, did we play him? I think we played him the year before in the Challenge Cup final and lost, didn't we? I think, and it was just yeah, got it. My first thought was right foot step, uh, carry off. carry right arm, bump off, and then I think it was Hodgson as well, bump off, and yeah, it was just pretty surreal, really. Just Cause that that put you back in the game. Was that the winning try or did that put you back in? Uh, I think it put us back in, but. Um, yeah, it was just just a good moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah I do. I had that redeem, and then the other one would be, I think, the, the try at Salford when you they were counting you off a bit, and then you made about an eighty average against Hull. I don't know. I scored the not seen, a few. So. Yeah, but <laughs> the, the not seen the, I'd not seen you change the gears like the float when we always had in. You just went and you brought it back, and you'd suddenly just seen half a gap, and you were through it. And I was thinking. I watched that highlights randomly. It came up about yeah. about a month and a bit ago. You went, oh my god, that's the game. Yeah, yeah we watched well, it. It might have been Saints. But it's Saints. Yeah, yeah. So you just and I know we're all over. I know instantly. I was like, the stride pattern's on. That doesn't change for nobody. He doesn't quicken his stride pattern. He just stays at the because you didn't. You weren't really somebody known for changing your gears, were you? It, did you always have that? I felt. I felt I've always had that, but it's it's just take probably that first ten twenty just because of my size and me. The sort of gate pattern it takes a bit to get going but I think probably my distance is probably 40 onwards you know once I'm in stride um, yeah. have you ever been caught bitch? Uh, probably a couple of times but not, not, not many <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because if you're talking to a lot of people we like you said we have years I were laughing when you famously bitch is one of the only players ever and you lads, I don't know if you know this, Bish did the 100 metre sprint at Carnegie Challenge. And he did it, how many years did you do that, Bish? Did it, uh, I think twice, maybe. 
I think just twice. Ex- I just explain my... what it was. It was it was all the fastest people from each club. Yeah, from each club. Referees. And what were the well. prize of referees? Uh, right? I think it were. I think it might have been a grand. A thousand quid. Yeah, I think it might have been. But I, I really like that concept because it were it were nines tournament as well. Brilliant. Yeah, just I think it was a week before. Gary's going to get we... taxed that. Gary put all that yeah, on. It, I wish we could go get get that coming. Get amazing, that back, wasn't it? It was great. Put yeah. that on YouTube now. Now YouTube's a bigger thing. It's amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. I can remember you all lining up. I yeah, don't know well, what... we had we had heats. Um, obviously it, 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 for Leeds we had heats for Leeds and uh, Jamel Chisholm obviously very fast he was like a little Olympic sprinter yeah, jam, he, he, jam very fast, so he did it for most years but I did it one year and um, so yeah heading late it was 90 metre sprint um, and I just got pipped on the line by Jody Broughton Jody Broughton yeah. your best mate yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, gave me, he had a bigger chest than me so. he did like <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. believe best mates going yeah. at it but no yeah it was good yeah I and enjoyed who, that did you win the other one I only did that one. We we won like the inter ones, the the inter sort of team ones. But yeah, I only I only ran that one. Do you know what? Honestly, if you if you did it again, and we've said this on yeah, the show, we'd sponsor it, it tomorrow. Ago. We'd sponsor that tomorrow because I loved it. Because it's always good. And I can remember sat in stand, and I can remember that guy from London didn't win it one year. We did. He and Mario Caro, yeah. and they walked up and they're doing odds. Oh, remember Bucky coming and he's like, everybody. Wants a, I can remember him coming round stand. Everybody want a bet. And Cairo must be about 33 to 1 but I've heard somebody Lying. say yeah. somebody said he's a bit like him when he's in stride it's all, it's all of it and he beat their London one by a bat and then it was like a bit more gaily I think it was gaily sat like he does in stand he went Cairo will win this easy and I was like he's about 33 to 1 yeah, yeah, yeah. showing down to Bucky how much can, how much can you put on <laughs> and everyone suddenly realised he won and he, he went who oh, did he beat? he beat I think he might have beat Jody. Jammer Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. And another one famously ran in it, which you'll laugh now, but and I shouldn't say laugh because he come. They said there's a kid at York. He's really fast. Tom Lynham. Right. Tom Lynham ran in it. I can remember Tom, a right powerful, uh, like a bull, really fast action. But it were never really favourites. That one, it were always somebody who dropped somebody in. The ones who I can remember, Reese Evans. At Warrington, all lads had Reese up piss it, and Reese were about forty metres behind them. They were, <laughs> yeah, he was sat there, were like. Everyone they said would win it didn't usually get it, did they? It's that top yeah, end, like you say, with you. It's the amount of times you're over years, people going, Oh, no, not you specifically, but he's not that fast. It's like, No, he is. But, but just because in rugby, you see those fast little feet over 20 feet and it looks amazing. But once you're in your full gate, top end speed, over 90 meters, it's a different type of speed. Isn't well, it? Yeah, I remember yeah, Darren yeah. Albert used to be a lovely <laughs> runner, didn't it? Once he got into his stride, he were, he were class. Nothing better in rugby league to see them when they go. There's, there's only so many could do it. Callum could glide. Callum. Now, Danny, I wanted to Danny. He wouldn't do it sprinting because I want to slow it. People <laughs> perception. Well, he had the brain. You know it. When Danny floated brain. into yeah. that game, mm. he, but Danny said, oh, I'd be good after 30. Cause, but Rob, Rob would beat anybody willed up to 30. Oh, to when Rob's, Rob's slowing down. Danny said, I could get Rob then. And then the speedsters would get them at... Well, Ryan Ola, he's best. Did Ryan what builds best swing and how fast were Ryan? Yeah, he was quick, yeah. I mean, I can't, I don't know, I can't really picture where he'd finish, but he was he quick. Once he, yeah, like I said, it's, it's getting going, like, he's, he's, a, he's a big, a big guy, isn't he? So it's, it's uh, that's probably what we're, even, even now we've got a speed coach at Sheffield, that's what I'm working on now, is that 10, 20 metres, because mm. ultimately in the game, that's, that's the space, so... If you can accelerate through that 10, 10, 20 metres, I know if I can get going, you know, there's not many who, who are going to catch me. So it's, it's getting that, that acceleration yeah, off the mark. I mean, that's why Jai feels a bit different because there's a few who have both, isn't there? And probably Jai and um, even Bevan, they probably got the 30 metres and then even at top speed, they'll still keep going. Whereas mm. usually it's one or the other. Yeah. You know, the faster, you know, the, the smart Rob Burrow's best example ever, isn't it? Just that little. Even Mikey Lewis, over 20 yards, likely, but at, at top speed, they should catch him. Mikey can, yeah. No, but Mike, yeah, you're right, but Mikey can hold it a bit. I, I know he can, but Bishop, Leeds, they were miles totally off him when he went totally through clear at Leeds, they didn't come for him. And I went my Mikey looking around at his guards and said, They're yeah. not that fast, I burnt to me. <laughs> he literally did it at every. There, were, uh, there wasn't, as I say, for me, there wasn't any anything better from me even growing up as a kid seeing Joe Lydon in full flight at, at Wembley, I was like, Oh, look at that. That's what meant the player. You it's like the Dom Young tribe of World Cup difference. watching yeah. him go, and he's yeah. like, wow, it's just, it's, that's what it's all about. And it's, 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 it's,
friendlies, lads. We've got, uh, I think we've got about five or six over the uh, over the weekend. First one will Whitehaven v Wigan. Um, I think it was a fairly young Wigan side. They Wigan pulled off the close win, twenty two to fourteen. Um, how much can you? I'll, I'll, I'll plug just, my just lads. Just yeah. results and we'll. Uh, witness be Oldham forty two twenty. That was number four G at Oldham, so qu- quite interesting there. Obviously, a lot of games cancelled because of the weather. But we'll discuss that in a minute. But the, uh, but I think a lot of people. I was quite surprised to see Oldham able to score twenty points against Witness. So promising signs for Oldham. Like, you know, you've got a player there, Jim. Must uh, not if they didn't play. They're injured. Yeah, but I mean, to be fair, Louis Satin came on in second half for Witness and changed the game. No, there's always some something. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Yeah, I just know you haven't got that witness. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm the second, <laughs> second half. Uh, I think the shocking result, Bish, you can uh, take us through this. Sheffield 20, Hull FC 22. Well, we discussed that earlier. And I believe... We? Yeah, we did actually, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> I had just gone, uh, yeah, yeah, discuss it within 20 minutes. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, good, great result for Sheffield, if you don't mind me saying, Bish. Obviously, I think uh, you said... Tag came on, Satai came on, didn't they, and made a big difference in that pack. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, great performance from Sheffield, would you say? Yeah, I think so. I think like I said it's um, it's good to get out there and, and get a game under his belt. It's been a long pre season for, for the majority of the boys, and uh, like you said, it's just fine tuning things now. That, that were a good one to see where we're at against, uh, obviously, you know, a Super League team. So um, Doncaster this week, and then first round, Halifax away. So, yeah, looking, really? looking forward to it. Then we've got uh, Lee and Leeds. We discussed that one, didn't we? Lee just picked Leeds 14-12. to 12, Last minute try by uh, Zach Ardacre. Um We probably need to have a discussion about this one after our preview and mine and your statement, Dad. Featherston Rovers 28, Hull KR 0. I think we both had Hull KR in the top four in our preview. A uh, bit of a shocking result, to be honest. Weird actually, because we, 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 deb- we debated the Leeds game with uh, uh, Simon Bell and John Bastin. We reviewed it in the car, me and the lads, and it was like a bit of crack, you know, let's review the game. And I were actually writing it, and I'm actually just jabbing Simon about eight times. It's all over eight hill to me, and I'm, I'm well clear on the piss text stakes and the knowledge. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and then all of a sudden, from nowhere, and, and I wish we could have filmed it, and it went, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Well, you might get it wrong about old KR in top two or top whatever I've said. Yeah, and he's laugh on his face. And then we all just burst out laughing. And I thought, you've got to take that because that, for me, listen, they, they, had, they had a very young squad out. But they should still, to get nilled on your first... I bet Willie is absolutely... This is how a coach works. Yeah, yeah. Willie wouldn't know now how Featherstone would come and beat him on that pitch. He should have said... These 16 points start on an average on their own pitch better than they are away. They know how to play it. They know exactly what the crowd will do. The crowd are right on your face. They're very vocal. This is the toughest gig we're going to pick for first game. So he's probably left his best players or what his strongest team a bit out and gone, we'll go with that. He's had shock of his life. They've absolutely got rolled, rolled, rolled. Bang, bang, bang. The young ones have probably come out with it more than the older ones. As the thing, like what I heard, the young players from them distinguish themselves but Willie Peters would have had the shock. I bet he sat with Danny on the way on my bus and just looked and gone. Because what you don't want, Willie's new job. He then plays, he's got one more friendly to come. I think it's Wigan. Somebody will tell me. No, Wigan's first, first game of the so season. It could be Leeds then. It actually could be Leeds. Uh, so he'll check. And I think it is Leeds. So you look at getting beat again, right? Let's say he gets beat again and everyone says friendlies don't matter. But then you go to Wigan and get beat first game. Do you count that as one lost game? Have you lost all three so far? I'll tell you what you've done. You've lost all three so far. Because the fans will drag that up like they drag. Well, we haven't won a game yet. Suddenly, Willie's sat there with Rolls Royce squad thinking it's all good and they've got beat three out of three. You go into your next game and you go in. Ugh. Now then, re- realistically, then I think they said they've got somebody like Wakey or Lee well, they might think we'll get them. That then game becomes the biggest pressure game you've ever had, and you're two games into the season, and you're thinking, "Well, I'm, I'm supposed to beat Wakey." You're gonna get beaten. You've lost. You haven't won a game since you've come. Let me tell you, it, you people say friendlies don't matter. I totally disagree, but for a new coach, they definitely do. You want to see a new brand of rugby? 
Leeds have got beat twice now. Got beat Wakey at home. Got beat thinking they played a lot of young players. But I'm not bothered who you are. You're still looking and thinking we probably need something here. You want to go into the season with a bit... Do, 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 would you say that as a player? Uh, as a player, I don't think the result... I, I suppose it's it's the manner of it. Um, I, was, I didn't see that game. I don't know. But you know, we, we've, we've lost um, against Hull by two points. But I think we're seeing that as a successful game. You know, I think it's how... How they've played in that game, yeah. rather than the actual. How did the goalie Hull. Um, I don't. What were the strength? What were the team like? A lot of young kids. The, the team you mentioned were fairly strong, I think. No, you're about. Oh no, I'm about, about KR. No, all your all OFC. How strong is Smith said after game? What's the thing? Um, I'm not sure. I think um, you know. Obviously, they changed the team up at half time. They kept a couple of. Couple of players on tag tag played into the second half, but then once the sort of game changed, Brad Dwyer came on and sort of uh, sped it up and um, you know, exploited our our rook a little bit. So I'm guessing he probably weren't happy with the first half performance, um, but then as they sort of started the second half well, I think he he would have been a bit happier happier about that. But I don't know. I'm guessing. It depends, I guess, what he, what he's seen in pre-season out of his team. You know, he's, he's put a few few of his new signings in there. Featherstone, so. I reckon on that result, Featherstone go favourites by a lot now. I think Featherstone are now champ. odds on, or maybe even money six. Jimmy will tell me about six to four. Yeah, they're, they're already favourites. They've gone a bit short. They've gone a bit, a bit short, so people go. And I think on the back of your result against all, you've probably gone up a few in the betting. Yeah, yeah. And well, Fed beat Cass as well, so the beat two, so Bleak yeah. comes on trot and... You know, the Sunday clubs have definitely played a lot of youngsters, yeah. but Featherston didn't have their first team out. What I saw on Boxing Day, there was still yeah. quite a few. No, so, of a I think it's hard because, like you said, it's not it's not the complete teams, is it? So yeah. it's yeah. a bit of mix and match. You know, if anything, you look at that result and it's more an indication on the squad, maybe of, mm. rather than the like actual it. starting team. Um, but yeah. that's the worry, isn't it? You don't, you don't care how one on paper to be nil. That's yeah. it. There's a huge difference between losing 28 12, isn't there? To, but to That's be a shocker, isn't it? It's a shocker. I, but, I but can but tell coaches, you, I can see it. Coaches are looking for what they get out of the game, aren't they? I know what you're saying, a new coach, it's a bit different. But anyone who reads too much into pre season friendlies on a scoreline alone, it, there's no point. If you then look in, I was at York Batley. You know, you can look at that scoreline and go, bloody You're hell. thinking Batley not going to be as good this year off that. Yeah, told us this no, no, but I, I'd already thought Batley would right. be a bit. I've already got Batley really struggling this but we year. Thought but York, well, we thought York on debut yeah, were but, like, ooh. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, if you look at that on paper, it's it's a big scoreline. Mm-hmm. But then I was there. I was looking to see Batley came with 17. Yeah. York have got 20 odd. It's on the 4G. York are clearly more up for it. Batley aren't. So it, there's so many factors in pre-season friendlies. You, you can't look at a score alone, unless it's 28-0 from a championship to a Super League that, that stands out out of any friendly I can remember I did it's weird you know when I was chairman of Donny we went to I've always told the story we thought we had the right team we went to Keithley first, my first game as chairman of club believe me it made a difference pre-season I was froze out of the Beatles and we were like I thought we were going to not get beat for two years that's my main mindset we've done all the work to get there Keith, it was the best thing that happened to us the best thing that happened to me I'm in that car I made four signings on my own car I was literally I knew trust me whether they say you knew I knew I went wow we are massively short we are and that I knew, I judged it straight off that I said historically where the keeper finished I know what they'd spent I'd gone in there thinking it was 40 and I was sat with Jade on my car up there but I was sat there with my mates horrified they, put, they pumped us back the two half backs I think uh, one were from they just they were that good they literally it were like we're miles off we are absolutely miles off these so sometimes it does give you a bit of a listen come on you know where you are you need to be better than that but is that the last one no well, well we can't no you kind of mentioned it but York 48 Batley 12 wow again that's a that's a Shot for me, I said that's where it's how how much do you read into pre season for me because some of the reports coming out of the first short game weren't all that positive to be honest. You know what I mean? As you speak to people, you know, the people who watched it, some of the players were like, No, we actually did all right. I, you know what I mean? I, we we look after a couple of the lads that actually said, No, we were okay. But if you speak to the ones who watched it, when it wasn't that good, and then they've and then from to them to come out either Hendo's give a great motivation saying we need to show and we can't have the doubt or Batley, were poor. or Batley were 
pretty poor and York are where they were. Yeah, so it's it's tough to read in. There's a few angles there that you can read into, so I really don't know where I lie with that one because it's even... Well, I've, ba- ju- I've just said that the big fun- things are like, there's a totally different number of players turned up. It's on the 4G. Everyone knows Batley at home or Batley away at Fev or away at Bradford. That's their, that's where they're good. It's a, it's a, a fast pitch. That suits York. And then York have got three or four more subs. And the thing's... That's what I can see. And then I speak to a couple of players after a game and I said to a York player, look good that. He said, they were up for it. You know, so straight away, it's like, as players, you can tell how hard you've been tackled, how much of a moving. And you, those little things like that. It, for me, I've not changed my opinion on York or Batley after seeing that game for this year. Wow. Is that indicative though? If they're not, if they're saying they're not, not up for it, obviously I'm doing the classic pre-season read way too <laughs> into it. So, so call me out, and I'll, I'll put that as a caveat on that. Yeah, probably I'm reading too into it. But if they're not that up for it, does that show maybe... This you can probably say, has there ever been a game where in pre-season it's, you're not up for it because you know what's coming in the season and you're like, Gosh. you're already... Yeah, you, you know, or, I want to play friendlies, probably not. No, <laughs> if I'm honest. But, um, I don't know, you know. With that one, obviously, it got cancelled... In terms of being on the yeah. on the field, so I don't know behind when when doors. did they find out it was going to be behind closed doors game freezing cold. Um, <laughs> did did they think it was? It's one of those where you play a team behind closed doors, and it this was a proper game by the sounds of it. But you know those sessions where it starts as opposed, and then someone offloads or someone sidesteps, and then things get ramped up a little bit. You know, so we're about the sounds like just going through the motions you, you, or look, they lost you, one you, last thing they lose they lose Josh Woods has come in for his first get you know second game he has to go off after 20 minutes so you know they've, they've lost for with what this song he's hurt his, he hurt his ankle a bad one or a I don't know he'll have to speak to that to it's like under the wheel he's thinking just indicative for, for a team you know, for the season because you know, Josh Woods big is thing is they've lost Gilmar they've <laughs> lost Dooley they're huge losses if he's Josh lost Woods, for the season that's a massive loss but no hopefully he's just tweaked his ankle but you know there's so many that's what I'm just saying there's so many factors well listen it's don't get, squad, yeah, yeah, don't get listen, famously somebody texted me after the game and said if Leeds are struggling with arse which I think they are there's a kid here called Atta Wigona who would be brilliant to lead <laughs> He pushed for it. He, he wouldn't, uh, you know, admit it because he's a massive fan of the current Leeds halfback, Austin. Uh, famously tipped him for two or three man of steals. Jimmy, what did I say about that? <laughs> I'll tell you this. I, I messaged. I tipped him once a man of steal. He came second. And last year, I, Jim, I didn't tip him last year. And in Hingano, I thought it looked a million dollars. He had it all his own way, but. Every part of him and his game yesterday, he looked, he looked special. It, it, I think there'll be su- we touched on it when we did the Wigan preview. I think there'll be Super League clubs this year because they haven't got a third half. They have to come looking at that championship quite early, and he'd be top of my list. He can whack as well, guys. He can whack. You know it. He's, he's played centre for most he's, of Lee last year. Didn't I think it? he's centre someone who he, hooker, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think he's someone who you know. There's some quality, you know. You look at Anthony Fackery, he's a golden championship halfback. Tom Gilmore, Joe Keynes, the three standout halves last year for me in the champ. But if I was looking for someone who could probably, potentially, jump into Super League... Take that in, step up. In Garno, seen, in Garno's the one who's got, he's got the physicality, the fitness, the speed and everything like that. So. Well, you've got a, you, listen, he's another one who wasn't getting regular work at, at Lee, not regular mm-hmm. games, and he's, and, he's, and he's got scout, you know... He's got scouted by, uh, oh no, it won't York, it won't, it won't me. And us, <laughs> uh, <we'd, laughs> I was asked by the chairman of York, why I'm eating with me and Ford Amarino, eating an Indian, and he said, give me a name. Who could liven this club up and take us to the next level? And we give the name. He said, are you sure? The deal were done uh, and, and the rest is history. Let's hope he is the player that... Uh, and with is. Brendan leaving, the yeah, yeah. York have lost Brendan O'Hag and he's had to go back to Australia, so... They've still got Liam Harris look great. And they've got Jamie Ellis on the sidelines coming back from injury. So York, without getting sidetracked, this year, they've not got an awful lot of numbers in depth in their squad, but one place for not short is half. Well, we, but for his legacy, he, he, to, to think he is the best coach, well, he's looking for Endo to finish in bottom. <laughs> 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 That's always looking back at it. You know, was, what's the famous one in Australia when they said, I've not mentioned the coach. Alex Ferguson did. No, 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 libelly, we don't want to do it, but the Australia coach, 
he's he would fix the cap up and he it, and the, the year he left it, it'd go yeah. boom, 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 boom. And I, <laughs> whoever comes in walked into that <laughs> <laughs> whoever comes in goes oh no oh no what's he on here 1.2 well how come we were on 500 grand last year made a lot of difference in <laughs> he's protecting your legacy on the cap which is, sick, uh, yeah, which is sick but I think Ford would have tried to do that if he could right that's that's about it just big thank you to the lads I think we've, we've covered a lot of points Sam, you famously said last week my joke got 1.7k uh, views. A lot of people thought it was funny. I know the lads did. I'm going to try another one because I've been to a Peter K concert. Lads, I'll just try it. Are you ready? So a lady goes to the doctor and said, Doctor, doctor, every time I sneeze, I have an orgasm. And the doctor said, What have you been taking for it? And she says, Pepper. <laughs> Clap. Yeah, that tumbleweed. <laughs> <laughs> Over to you, end the show. Thank you, everybody. See you soon. <laughs>